In this video, we are going to share a little bit about how our parents and in-laws, Chinese in-laws, reacted to us dating Chinese guys and also coming to China. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another video from Ling Ling. Today I am again filming from Northwest China, a province called Qinghai. We are in the capital city Xining, just a little bit outside in a small Chinese village where I am visiting my Swedish friend Miriam, who is Hello. married to a Chinese guy. Yes, I'm just talking blah blah blah. <laughs> so in today's video, we're just gonna do a little bit of chit chat with you guys. We're going to share a little bit about how her parents and Chinese in-laws reacted to her and her boyfriend now husband getting married and I am also going to share a little bit of my experience with like my parents and also my I had a Chinese boyfriend before how his uh, parents reacted to us getting together so without further ado let's get started so let's talk a little bit about Chinese guys and coming to China and how our parents reacted to this. So Elsa, the first time I came to China, my parents were like, oh yeah, she's just going there for fun. Like it's just yeah. a little adventure, she's adventurous, my mom was adventurous with, when she was young and I probably just inherited that from her. So they were like, yeah, she's just going to go there for eight months and then she's going to come back. Yeah, so I did come back and then I bumped into this really cute Chinese guy. And I was like, I like you, you like me. We were supposed to be language partners, but yeah. that obviously <laughs> didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, so after meeting him, we stayed in Denmark for a few months and I was like, I have to go back to China. I really want to, I really want to, I really, really want to. Mm. So he was going back to China for an internship and I just went with him. And my parents were oh. like, oh, okay. They kind of... My parents are very quiet about feelings and stuff, so they would be like, oh, okay, <laughs> right, she's with a Chinese guy, yeah. I didn't know this story. No, oh yeah, that's true, we didn't talk about this yeah. before. <laughs> I thought we shared a lot, maybe not this. Yeah, so after that, we after three months, I think, we went to China together, moved in together for like four or five months. Wow. I know. He was a little bit older than me, so he was more mature, I guess. I was not. <laughs> Just very young and like, yeah, okay, why not? You know, so I went to North China, stayed in Shenyang, studied some Chinese and stayed with him for a while. And my parents, they actually didn't really say much at that no. time. So I think that's like the first thing. And then later on, like then we broke up obviously. And then later on, my parents would be like, oh, you're going to China again. And like, oh, you're going to China again. And like, oh, now you're saying you're like moving to China. And you don't have stuff at home anymore, like what's going on right now? And my mom sometimes have been trying to say like, oh, it could be fun if you just met a Danish guy or maybe even a British guy because UK is not too far away. <laughs> my mom was saying that too when I was right? in Denmark. She's like, oh, we're in Denmark. That guy looks nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I tell them I quite like the Asian look and then they're like, oh, maybe you can find like an adopted Chinese <laughs> Danish guy and I'm like, thank you mom for your support, thank you very much. <laughs> so that's like kind of how my parents reacted in the beginning. What about yours? Well, I think it's quite similar because it's a, maybe a European thing to do, hmm. to take that gap year, you know, you go and I think it's a very Scandinavian somewhere. thing, yeah. 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 I think um, was, like our parents are very like open-minded and like you just go and do your thing yeah, and then sure. we'll take it as it comes, you know. I mean, I think the love, when love happens, then they realize, oh my, they might be longer than we expected. Yeah. yeah. Like, so I was here for one semester mm. and then I extended one more and they didn't care so much and then I extended mm. one more and they were, <laughs> they were like, hey. <laughs> they were still kind of okay and then I said I was getting married and they're like, oh, oh. <laughs> That's like a different thing. Wow. Um, <laughs> I can so. imagine. That must have been a huge shock. Because like, mm. well, in the beginning you were just uh, talking to your, your husband on the phone. So mm. did you like kind of keep them updated? Or no, or, like, really. Because like, no. when we were dating, it was still kind of on and off. Mm. So sometimes oh, I'm yeah, like, okay, okay, no, it's not going to happen. So I would have to I told my mom that I was seeing someone. Mm. And then she didn't really know it was serious. Mm. 
Well, I guess it's also because I feel like in Scandinavia, it's very much like seeing someone. You can see someone for like 10 years and still not get married. Yeah. If you know sure. Chinese culture just a tiny little bit, you will know that people date for one or maybe two years and then you have to get married or else it's just a waste yeah. of time. Yeah. You know, so, so it's much more rushy here. Yeah. So your parents would just probably just like, oh, that's cool. She's seeing someone. That's fine. Yeah. You know, whatever. <laughs> and then it was a big deal. <laughs> it was getting serious. Now I'm getting married! Oh, okay! <laughs> so, are you, you're planning on having a wedding at some point, right? We're gonna have a wedding party Something. at some point. Yeah. yeah. And do you um, think, would you invite your parents? Like, do you think they I would, would come? I would invite them. I, like, the thing is gonna be very, like, typical rural Chinese thing. So, it's, I mean, it would be interesting for them to see for sure. Mm. But it's also, you know, a lot of just smoking and drinking and yeah. a lot of meat. My parents also don't eat a lot of meat anymore. Right, okay. So I think, in a sense, because I think we would be very busy, so in a sense mm. I think it would not really be fair to, you know, demand them to come. I would and definitely get them to want to come. And like My friends want to come. Yeah, they're sure welcome. You but have they've never be been chance. here before. Oh, yeah, so it would be true. like a real culture shock that's for everyone. Huge. And like starting out with the Chinese countryside, that's huge. Yeah. <laughs> like a wedding in the Chinese Yeah, country. and your daughter Coming getting married in the countryside, that's, that's huge. So, I mean, if you want to come, you're welcome. But of we're course. also planning to have some sort of party in Sweden. Mm. Yeah, a lot of a lot of girls marrying Chinese guys, they very often have this like one wedding in their country and one wedding in China because it's yeah. just easier than flying people back and forth yeah. and like visa and stuff. The thing, if I want my friends to come too, like they would have to spend maybe like 10,000 a lot of money, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that would be expensive. And I wouldn't have time, like if my parents come, it would be fine, but if like my extended family comes <laughs> and then friend comes and I have like 20, 30 people here that I have to... But yeah, both translate for yeah. it. have to show them around because oh. they can't get around themselves. And so where to put stuff. them? Like, where yeah. should they stay? <laughs> Can I sleep on the oh. floor? Oh. oh my god, I'm getting all the tired just thinking about it. Yeah, and the car can get them all up together. <laughs> oh, that would be awkward. <laughs> so that was our own parents. So now we're moving on to like our Chinese in-laws. So as you guys know, I'm single right now. But before, I was seeing a guy from northern China. And I think his parents has and have never been outside of their own city. Like they are staying in Shenyang, and then they were from the village, from the countryside before. But then they moved into like, well, like the urban, or like a, what is like the suburbs of uh, of Shenyang. So they stayed there. And I think I was the first foreigner they met, and I did speak mm. some Chinese. And they also in the north, their accent is very clear, so it was okay to understand what they said. So I was just like visited, visiting them because that's what you do with Chinese parents. You visit them like every weekend and okay. make dumplings. Oh, we made dumplings <laughs> every single weekend. Oh my god! I like I was so tired of eating dum dumplings in the end because I was like I can't I can't go home with time. <laughs> <laughs> but those were interesting weekends. So we had a lot of family time there, and they invited me to go and play matian as well, a Chinese oh. game. Yeah, so we would play a lot, and then at some point the boyfriend he would leave because he had to go back to Denmark to finish his degree, and I didn't want to come. I was like China. <laughs> that was our biggest. That. that was actually our biggest issue in the relationship was that yeah. I love China so much, and he was kind of tired of China, just wanted to go back to Denmark. Oh wow! Yeah, that was a, one of our biggest issues. That's really interesting. <laughs> that was funny. I was just like, ah, I just want to stay. So I actually moved into the dorm at that time, the university dorm in December, and it was like minus 25 degrees outside and like super cold inside too. So I complained to his parents. And what they did was they came and picked me up and took all my things and then they told me to move in to their apartment. They had an extra room. So sweet. So I just uh, stayed there for a month. Yeah. And they were so excited about me. I don't know if it's... I think it's also because I was a girl, they only had a boy, like there were only boys in the family and like we went to uh, for a photo shoot because I really like to dress up. So if you have seen my profile picture or channel, everything here, the red chipao is actually from that day. Wow. Yeah, so we went to take pictures in chipao and other Chinese dresses and they would literally like hold my hand in my arm and we would walk around and his uh, mom would like showing people like this is my daughter-in-law and she was so excited. And she got some of the pictures printed out and they put them on the wall of me. Like, only me. <laughs> That's <laughs> that, <really laughs> It was very 
intense and I was yeah. 20. Yeah. I was 20 years old, very naive and very like, oh my god, what's going on here? This Because I mean, it's, yeah, it's a culture and they're used to it as well. Mm. So just kind of go too much. Flow and see. Yeah. I was but, like yeah. young, you know, and nice boyfriend, but like I was just not sure about this whole situation. They were yeah. so excited. So I actually bought a ticket and left uh, to travel to get some time on my yeah. own because it was too much. Like they would follow me everywhere all the time just yeah. to help, but like every single day take my panties and wash like one pair every day and like follow me to the bus and take the bus with me to the metro and pick me up at the metro oh, station wow. in the evening go back like it was so nice but it was just too much for me at that time yeah i just couldn't handle it so yeah. i gotta say they really accepted me uh i think they were just happy that they saw their son had someone because yeah. i think he had been single for quite a while yeah so they were just really really excited it. That was yeah. that was the best accept you could ever have, I guess, from Chinese parents. They, yeah, they they are some really nice people. Yeah. yeah. What about uh, what about yours here? <laughs> now you're so, living yeah. with them. Yay. So I met them about a year ago, right? First time I met them. Like at that time, I could speak with them. Mm. Like my mother-in-law, she speaks uh, Mandarin mm. quite well. My father-in-law speaks a little bit, but it. Mm. I, struggle more yeah. with him to communicate mm. but they were like i've heard stories about other people mm. meeting parents yeah. and loss so mine are very very nice they're very yeah. friendly you know when it comes to food they always cook i'm a vegetarian that was so, so amazing when i heard yeah. that guys like they stopped eating meat for her like yeah that so they're was... basically not eating meat maybe a few times a week that is so Crazy. Very rarely cook meat. Like mm. for countryside, you know, small village people yeah. who has they've never been anywhere, right? Like they've only really, been no. No. Yeah. only been in this yeah. area. So I think that's amazing. Yeah. They're very open minded and very mm. accommodating. Yeah. yeah. I can feel yeah. it too when I'm here as well. Like there is nothing, you know. Yeah. They're just There's being no problem. so nice and polite. Yeah. yeah. It's really nice. Sometimes when you're going to Chinese uh, families homes it's sometimes a little too overwhelming like people want to serve you all the time I always feel so bad about it because yeah. I'm like you don't have to serve me like I'm a princess or anything I yeah. know it's just to be nice because I'm your guest but I really like if we can just like hang out and yeah. chill you know and just do a thing together but also do our own thing it doesn't really matter because yeah. we're used to at home we just grab you know drinks from yeah, other exactly. people's fridge if you want something to drink you go and grab it you know like <laughs> it's not it's a big not, deal no but, um, but they were, yeah, I think the first time I came, they were more like that, mm. more like taking care of me, giving of me course, food drinks. Yeah. But then when I came here the second time, mm. now this year, it was, I mean, I came to live here, mm. not just to visit. Yeah. So it was a big difference. Yeah, so you become now, a part of the family. Mm. And that was even yeah. like my sister-in-law, she was home and I was doing this, she says, oh no, you can't do this, it's you. Yes, and they said, oh, sorry. Uh, they said, I'm oh, sorry, I don't mean you're a guest. Your family, your family. Uh, <laughs> and they said, let me do the dishes. Like, Yay. Because they realized, I mean, yeah, it's just a family. Then when you really become family, it's a little different. Yeah. They which is nice. Because more. Yeah. they have more. You don't want to like, be a guest in your own house. No, like, exactly. This is your home now. So. Yeah. Yeah. But I still, like, that's one thing. I still can feel that because I don't know the culture. Mm. It doesn't, I mean, it feels like my home. I live mm. here and all. But there's still things that I'm not yeah. really sure how I should do. And I'm not used to all the traditions because mm. they have a very traditional way of living, a very simple way of living. Mm. So they grow their own food. And when they are harvesting and when they're taking care of all the harvest, I don't know what yeah. to do. So I'm just yeah. kind of, you know. <laughs> I had that here too. I don't know. <laughs> I'm also struggling with do. these cultural things, especially in these smaller places, because yeah. it's just more important to them. And like, yeah, like as an example, when I was uh, working out here, right? Yeah. Like they have this room out here. It looks like a living room. So I, because yeah. the Wi-Fi doesn't work here. So I was just working a little bit out there. And she came to tell me that uh, it would be better if I stayed here or outside, uh, downstairs. Because it's like a, what is it, like a holy or like... Yeah, so they have like the family, ancestors, yeah, ancestor and then they have the Buddhist yeah, te yeah. temple thing. Yeah, so yeah. I was so just like, oh thing. no, 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 so yeah, embarrassed, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. so it's really, it's all about I learning. I didn't know that either in that area, I was sitting, because you're not supposed to have your feet towards Buddha. Oh god. So I was sitting on the couch with my feet. Oh, Buddha well, I've also that. done... <laughs> I'm happy you say you have done it too. <laughs> yeah, like, it, those kind of things that you, like, oh. You realize yeah. you don't really know your 
True. Well, yeah. You need because it still feels like you need a, to tell yeah. you or like your your husband. Yeah. You know, he he should tell you. So he's a very nice guy though. So yeah. I guess he's <laughs> telling. You. Yeah, I kind of can too. <laughs> so this was this was a, a long video, guys. Oh, Sorry yeah. for all our chanting. We're trying to keep it under ten minutes, but it's obviously not working. No. <laughs> We've just had a lot of fun here in the little village, but uh, but yeah, thank you very much for watching our video here and please let us know in the comment below what kind of experiences you have had yes. with like marrying between two different cultures or like when you moved abroad or how your parents reacted and how your in-laws reacted could be interesting to hear other people's yeah. experiences as well yeah so have a nice day evening wherever you are in the world guys and we'll see you again very very soon Ling Ling and Miriam is out see ya and bye bye